All right, looks like we got everything going here. Let's get started. Sure. Okay. First of all, thanks for sharing a moment with us today, and uh, congratulations, you got a new record. Thank Tribes you. is coming up here. Thank you very Talk much. Talk about the record, you know, just how it all came about. Well, like like most of them come about, we we you know I write and then I send uh, demos into Rick and the rest of the guys, and um, my demos pretty much finished with regard to what I want on it, you know, from my parts, and um, then they just go in and, and attack it, uh, put their own bits on it, and we talk about you know should we do this, should we do that, and. And so it's definitely a group thing. And um, because geographically we're challenged, uh, we, we have to do it that way. <laughs> it makes but, sense. Do you, uh, do you find uh, that once you created the structure of the song itself, it evolves over the progression through the band? That it what? I didn't understand you. Do, do you find that the, uh, the song evolves? You create the structure, the basic structure. Do you find that the song right. evolves as it goes through the band? And oh, sure, and yeah. Once they, sure, once they do their parts, uh, it, it depends on the song, too. Sometimes uh, you don't have to really mess with it much. Uh, and then other times, like, you know, and usually uh, I'll be maybe the first one to say something that, you know, Hey, this needs this is too big of a hole, too boring here. Da, da, da. And, uh, but they just go, they just go. That's kind of cool. Um, yeah. this, this, you got a couple singles out already, of course, tribes, and I'm looking for the second in my notes. I'm just curious what, uh, what was, why the selection of tribes first? Uh, that was the record company's idea. Uh, we really had little to do with that, but you know, they, they talked to us about it. So it's not like they just did it. Uh, but yeah, they wanted the, the first three they wanted to, to, uh, do something clicked on in here. Uh, we still on? We're on. Okay, good. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The first three, they wanted them in, in that order and the rest, they said, go ahead and do what you want. <laughs> well, you certainly have a theme on this record. Um, Some of it, yes. Sort, yeah. It's a, kind of a theme of really what America is today. Talk about why you chose that as sort of the, the voice of this record. Well, it's kind of like overwhelming what's going on. Um, and it, it would be hard for me to ignore that. And it's not like I'm trying to, trying to be political. Uh, but it kind of like came off that way. I, I think it comes off, some of it comes off that way. Uh, but it's more like I usually say it's an observation, which is what I tried to do as opposed to taking any sides. Uh, not interested in that. And I'm sure people aren't interested in my take on, <laughs> on taking on, you know, what's on your mind? You know? Your music, uh, the, this album is. You know, you mentioned it being political or not. Mm. I didn't see it as necessarily political. It's more about civility, about finding ways to communicate, which is exactly what music is. Yeah, well, that's, you know, we're so broken up uh, and so much hatred and anger and splits. I mean, we are so divided that I think that that was like, uh, if I even... If I didn't even want to write about that, I don't think it would be possible because it's just so overwhelming. At least it is to me. And I'm sure, you know, to most of the country it is. No matter what side you're on, there's, you know, it's, it's a mess. I agree with you. Given, uh, given our COVID era here, were you guys able to all to get together and record this or did you do this kind of remotely? Uh, no, no, no. The guys got together. Uh, one, two, three of them got together. Ricky and Bobby and uh, Joey, drummer. Right. Uh, so they cut, uh, they actually cut live at Rick's studio. And then, then it goes out, goes out to Dave and to Glenn. Uh, and like I said, I already put my, my stuff was already sent in. So yeah, it was kind of sort of remote and sort of not. <laughs> I read in the press release, you guys have been a band in several variations for almost 45 years now. Yeah. Uh, do you find it getting any easier? To, to, 
you, you well, must have found your way. It's easy to play live because once, yeah. you know, you do, excuse me, you do that stuff so long and, uh, and does it get any easier? I imagine so. It becomes almost automatic, which we have to be careful about that, especially live. Uh, because you can kind of snooze through if you weren't paying attention. Yeah, I completely understand what you're saying. It makes, sure, it makes it's just sense, a, yeah. Yeah, it's just a habit. <laughs> <laughs> Play the same songs every set. Yeah, you'd be kind of crazy. I'm sorry. I said doing the same songs every set, same order and everything, it'd be kind of crazy. I could see where it'd make anybody snooze. Oh, yeah, well, yeah, it can... It can certainly put you to sleep if you're not, you know, and we don't like to do that. I mean, we're, we're there to entertain people and that's, that's our, our focus, you know, even if we're not entertaining ourselves sometimes, but I'm just speaking for myself. It's, uh, you know, Bobby loves playing uh, out and Ricky is just, you know, completely animated and, you know, he, he really loves it and, and, you know, I'm okay with it. <laughs> You're gonna have to. I, I, I would rather. I would rather write and record. That's that's where I get my kicks of doing stuff. I understand. So yeah. I guess COVID, in an odd sense, is a bit of a luxury because it gives you an opportunity to be home and actually do some of that writing and recording. Yeah, I try to write every day. Uh, I don't get a song out every day, but I I certainly try to. To keep going, you know, so I don't, so I don't miss anything. <laughs> well, if you can just capture an idea every day, you're well ahead of the pack. Yeah, well, usually it's it's music that I'll that I'll come up with, and uh, which is for me much easier than uh, writing lyrics, because um, lyrics, you know, you have to grab people right off the bat if you want, you know, a good song. Um, at, at least I believe that. And so, so I'll do music and uh, every day just about, yeah. And then I'll, I'll pick a piece and say, I like that one or that one's junk. Uh, sometimes I'll put them together, you know, a couple together ideas. Uh, so, yeah, but I do keep busy with it. So last year uh, in August, you, uh, you released a lot of back catalog. You came out with 15 of your previous albums. Yeah, um, getting them back and printing it for the public. Talk a little bit about uh, choosing the albums and putting them back out. Well, we uh, the uh, carry on uh, when we first decided on going with them and then you know picking this up. We're interested in back catalog licensing them uh, and licensing it, um, and and that's pretty much how that came about. And what was picked was actually the stuff that we had ownership on to, to license. Um, some of the stuff is, you know, is gone. We went to Lysol. And for whatever reason, they were not interested in licensing out. Like, uh, I think it's like three or four of them. But the rest, the rest, you know, we did. And I don't know what they're planning on do doing with those. <laughs> Well, but, do you keep up with your own catalog, or do you, did you find yourself rediscovering some of your older music? No. I don't listen to my music. No, I don't. I, I, you know, once I'm done with it, once I'm done with an album, I mean, the guys laugh at me, because once an album is done, I, I'll never hear it again. Hmm. I'm not interested. I'm just moving on. That's interesting. Yeah, and I've asked that question you know, band, uh, it comes in. Well, I forgot all about that song, and it was kind of cool hearing oh, it. Oh, yeah. I have to use the thing to do, uh, iPad when we're live because I'm, you know, clueless at this point about, you know, something that was written in 19, you know, 80. Uh, and it's like, what What did I say then? What was that? Yeah. So, yeah, on stage, I, I, have, a, I have my own uh, kind of, uh, what's it called? What's the word I'm looking for? Uh, well, it's an iPod, so uh, iPad. So, <laughs> well, is it, what are the plans as far as touring and getting back on the road? I, I'm seeing in my press releases that they're starting to open up a very little bit toward the end of the year. Are they really? 
I've seen a couple bands announce tours, yeah, but we're talking November, really? December. No, I'm not going anywhere till this thing is like under control. That's crazy. I mean, it's and more variants are coming out. It's uh, no, we don't have any plans, and I haven't heard of any venues that, that are actually opening. I mean, I don't know where these bands are going to tour. There's agents are closed, agencies are closed. Uh, certainly venues are, are closed or if not, you know, a, a third capacity um, and they can't pay, you know, they're getting killed. So no, nah, we have no plans. I, I wish we could, I wish we could support the record. That's, you know, that's usually how it's supposed to go, but nope. <laughs> so I've seen in past interviews, uh, the East Coast, Baltimore area, and West Virginia, and so on. Um, yeah. Huge love for you and your band, and and uh, just talk about that hometown for you. It's the towns are so close that there are many hometowns. Just talk a little bit about that. Right. Well, we broke out of Baltimore uh, basically because everything was in place when the first album came out. Uh, you could actually find the distributors had it in the stores and radio went on it and just, just in Baltimore. Uh, although I'm sure other places were on it, but nothing, it was not all cohesive situation. It was, uh, but in Baltimore it was records were in the stores, radio was on it and then we were going out to play live. And we ended up, we played this little club and we were booked to do just one night and we ended up staying there for a week. Because it, it really was, you know, packed and every night and people really enjoyed it. We got a kick out of it because before then we were, they had sent us to up to Canada uh, to, to play. So in case you screw up, you know, it's no big deal. <laughs> that was their logic, uh, our manager. And um you know, and we came back down and when we hit Baltimore and we had that kind of reception, it was incredible. And they have stayed, uh, you know, with us for throughout the entire, you know, kind of like career that we've established here. Um, and then other places in the East and the Northeast and, uh, you know, picking up, you know, different cities like Buffalo does okay and uh, Cleveland does all right. Uh, yeah, it's it's bizarre because we didn't have that one uh, hit record that crossed you know uh, all boundaries. We just haven't done that yet. Maybe this time. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Maybe it is this time. Yeah, who knows? We have a very relevant album, and it'd be uh, it'd be great to hear it. Yeah, I'd, I'd like to. I'd, I'd, like, I'd like it to be heard. <laughs> well, that's all the questions I've got. Is there anything I missed? Is there anything else you want to talk about? Uh, no, it's kind of boring talking about myself. <laughs> I, don't, I don't really care for doing that much. Uh, but if you have anything else, I'd be glad to address anything. Uh, but I think we're good. All right. Well, I appreciate your time. Thank you much. I wish I could shake your hand, but thank you very much, David. Yeah, okay, right. right. <laughs>